you are an unknown lord solely depending on the power and providence of the one who called basra is a region tribal region bigger than the state of kerala and is a place where people are afraid to enter even today <coughs> it was entrusted to cmi st joseph province under the leadership of monsignor paulino sierra cmi to develop it into a mission diocese of the siro malabar church from nothingness we started and together we worked to achieve the goal of developing the entrusted mission for the betterment of the people under our care the legacy of the episcopal leadership of bishop paulino sierra cmi was continued by bishop mar semestro palatra cmi and is now shouldered bishop joseph kollamarbil efficiently the cmi region of jagdalpur gradually became normal province and it continues to contribute to the growth of the mission this golden jubilee is a time to turn back and appreciate the success stories of of the sweat and toil of our pioneers with their dedicated hard work they have succeeded in the making of the mission of jagdalpur to the pristine present stage together with our praise there were many religious sisters catechists faithful benefactors and well wishers who have contributed commendable share of their services to bring this mission to what it is today this webinar is meant to express our sincere thanks to all our collaborators and pioneers and i hereby invite you all to join our joyful moments with warm regards i welcome our dear bishop mar joseph kolumbal bil cmi and all the excellencies to this mission webinar i am happy to welcome our dear reverend father prayer general father thomas chatta parambil and for joseph tamrisheri vicar general and coordinator of this webinar and general councillors all provincials and major superiors vicar generals of the diocese CRI members bodies brothers and sisters to this program I gladly welcome our resource persons Bishop Joseph Kolamarbil Father Sai Ibrahim Kuchigarigal Thomas Mubajara Sandosh Kothir and Prince Anthony to this webinar I wish you all a great time may almighty god bless all of us on our missions thank you Francis in his apostolic exhortation Joy of the Gospel says that mission is at once a passion for Jesus and passion for his people. This mission is not an option but a mandate of Jesus given to his church and a common baptismal commitment to preach the gospel. In 1975 St. Pope Paul VI issued a landmark document Evangelii Nunciati. Drawing together the teaching of the Second Vatican Council, Pope Paul VI described evangelization as the Church's deepest identity and mission. The missionary mandate is based on the great commission of Jesus. For us CMIs, the mission was the great legacy we have received from our founding fathers. And our forefathers and the elders were conscious of this missionary identity. by which they felt obliged and were essentially committed to be witnesses beyond borders that's why a congregation was ever ready to take up different missions whether it is in high ranges or in malabar or beyond the borders of harappa or to reach out to the north and part of the country and even beyond going up to iraq the success story with Our first mission of Chennai in 1962 paved way to endless us with more mission regions. Today we celebrate the 50th year of our missions in Bangalore, Jagdalpur and Rajkot, which we were entrusted to the congregation in 1972. This webinar as already told is an occasion to look back with gratitude and to acknowledge and appreciate the missionary accomplishments and commitments of the pioneer missionaries of our congregation 
This three-day webinar is dedicated to our three missions of Pijano, Jagdalpur and Rajkot, with the view that the story of the hardships and toil is shared in a wider platform of the congregation. Yesterday we heard the success story of Pijano mission and how they under the able and visionary leadership of Bishop Gracian and the pioneer missionaries succeeded to establish a mission from nothingness. On the second day, we are here to have a glance on how the Jagdalpur mission was grown to the present stage. The missionaries along with Bishop Joseph Columbarmil are here with us to tell us about the story of the mission. One of the strategic points that Bishop Paulina CMI, the first bishop, gave to his conference as they had to start from nothingness was to make strangers our friends. As the mission was entrusted to the undivided St. Joseph's province and the first five missionaries reached Basta, one of the toughest and least developed regions of India, everything was strange and new for them. A lot of hardships and tribulations awaited them, but they did not lose heart. Rather, their missionary zeal and enthusiasm kept them going ahead. Today at this moment of celebrating the Jubilee, a closer analysis of the leadership of Bishop Paulinus, a silent but a great visionary leader, shows that he had a clear vision with regard to developing the mission entrusted to his care. For example, he advised the missionaries to open a mission center in every Tahasil headquarters and then move from there to further interior places. An untold policy of moving from center to periphery. Bessar was known for its tribal population. More than 70% of the Bessar population consisted of tribals. But what I appreciate in this good shepherd was the way he appreciated and loved his people. Although he did not master their language, he conquered their hearts with love. He learned to appreciate their rich tribal culture. He used to tell us seminarians to learn from the way the tribal people live and move from one place to another. There is a unity of movement. There is a communion existing within this group, a communitarian trust which we can and we must learn from them. At this moment, the congregation remembers Bishop Paulin as the first bishop, Bishop Simon Stoke's successor and one of the first five missionaries, and Bishop Joseph Columbar will the present bishop, and all the fathers, sisters, and lay catechists who laid foundation to the mission of Bastar and contributed to develop it to the present stage of an eparchy. This jubilee shall, more than leading to a kind of self-appreciation, self-satisfaction, should challenge us today to leave the present with missionary passion and to prepare ourselves for the future without losing the missionary vigor and vitality. We should be inspired to dream of a church of missionary disciples for whom missionary activity is intrinsic to our very being and identity. As Pope Francis says, the Lord needs you. Today too he is calling each of you to follow him in his church and to be missionaries. The Lord is calling you today. Listen to what he is saying to you in your heart. Mission involves love and love always involves closeness to the people. To engage in mission means going forth, coming out of ourselves and drawing near to others. It means closeness or encounter. One cannot evangelize without closeness, says Pope Francis in Evangelii Gaudi. When we analyze the success stories of our missions, they tell, they tell us very clearly that the success happened because our missionaries were close to the people even to the extent of sacrificing their own safety and comfort. 
we need to step out and encounter others since the gospel is good news for all people without exception our mission is to offer god's love to everyone everyone with all of his or her problems needs to be made to feel included and welcomed our pioneers succeeded to have learned this truth and that is the secret of their success we are all the more challenged today as cmi congregation is preparing to enter into the 200th year of the foundation of the congregation it challenges us to be more missionary our congregation needs to be missionary this only will keep us dynamic and ever growing let this mis- webinar and the stories of the missionaries instill in us the love for mission and the honest desire to be missionaries thank you very much on this great occasion of golden jubilee of jagdalpur mission to revisit and to recollect the saintly life the vision and the mission of bishop paulinos is a blessing it can be very inspiring and meaningful for the missionaries those who are in the field today in jagdalpur and elsewhere pastor was very much an unknown and isolated part of this continent even today for many it remains so it is to this obscure land that the holy father saint pope paul 6 appointed monsignor paulinos head of cmi as the apostolic exar on 23rd march 1972 for the pioneer missionaries the context itself was a challenge before them monsignor paulinos significantly expressed it by taking the motto with the boldness and courage as saint paul saint thomas and other disciples of jesus who all led to the lands unknown to them with the courage and boldness bishop paulinos and pioneer missionaries of jagdalpur also ended in bastar imbibing the same apostolic spirit of the first disciples of jesus bishop paulinos vision for a church in the context of bastar Reverend Dr. Thomas Mambara, former Prior General of our congregation, notes, as the first bishop of the new diocese of Jagdalpur, his dedication to the people of Bastar and to the cause of evangelization was total. This dedication was expressed in his vision for the diocese of Jagdalpur. Bishop Paulo's vision for the diocese of Jagdalpur was thoroughly characterized by the life and culture of the tribal people who form the majority in the territory bishop paulinos visualized a church in the jagdalpur mission based on the life culture and the mentality of the tribal people a totally contextualized local church bishop paulinos loved the people of bastar their culture their traditions he wanted to explore them in depth he used to recommend the scholastics to contextualize their studies for the betterment of the mission of mission in jagdalpur when i was doing my mth studies bishop insisted me to do my research paper reflecting on tribal culture of bastar he himself suggested me to read certain books and visit uh, certain places and even to attend certain functions like the big tribal fest mela at narayanpur kondagav etc in his personal collection of books there were books very rarely available on tribal culture for example maria gons of bastar by mv grigson he was keeping a cyclo styled copy of the original of it while i was doing my regency at kodagao village in 1981 i was encouraged to attend the pujas performed by villagers on certain occasions like hariyali diari navakhani etc to understand the culture of the people and to get involved in the village life bishop paulinos was very much expressing his vision the ardent desire to facilitate the practice of catholic faith in bastarian context in his very attitude of life 
in his thinking and conversations it was very often clearly expressed i would say it is not at an actualized vision it is very much the need of today it will be the present persistent need for the future too therefore in the missionary action we need to keep an open space emerged to set the patterns at uh, at the same we need to be faithful to our traditions and practices to preserve the integrity of faith and the morals expressing gospel in the tribal cultural context of bastar versus many old healthy challenges bishop audinos was well aware of it he used to advise i am not giving any permission to do this way or that way but i am allowing freedom for innovations and experiments bishop audinos was expressing the feeling that a healthy disturbance for innovations and attitude to abide by the spirit of god will lead us to meaningful observances in the very beginning of the exarchate he appointed father abraham dirithimali cmi in charge of liturgy and music and rest and instructed him and father ms kandathil to learn and practice the prayers in the local languages each occasions when tribal dances a certain cultural adaptations were experimented he used to encourage and appreciate bishop howdy knows an effective evangelizer Reverend dr thomas aikara our former prior general stated regarding mr howdy knows that the doctor who treated mr howdy knows in the last days of acute leukemia commented i have found a bishop of my heart father thomas aikara comments that our daily life undeceivably will unveils what we are and the people will really get inspired by the lives we lead this establishes the most effective form of evangelization after according to father thomas aikara bishop audinos was a personality rich in indian soul of the spirit and simplicity silence and prayer peace and powerlessness interiority and an inner realization he did not attach much importance to the roti external so dress and diverse decorations but gave importance to the inner depth of life in its transparency he was a silent but a proud son of the siro malbar church he was not much interested in verbal controversies but deeply involved in the vibrant issues especially in the context of mission he visualized very much that the ancient patrimony and the precious heritage of the individual church must get incarnated in time and space he was convinced that a balanced blending of the past and present must contribute towards realizing a dynamic church for basta tomorrow a missionary who walked the path of dialogue of life Bishop Paulinos walked the path of dialogue of life as a missionary in the challenging situations of Jagalpur mission. Reverend Father Alexander Maramettem, one of our senior missionary and the former provincial rights, Bishop Paulinos reminded a chosen remained a chosen instrument in the hands of God to nurture the diocese in its infancy. He did not consider himself the be all and end all of the diocese. rather his approach was dialogical and democratic he was very simple and open man whom everyone could approach there was nothing obscure or unpredictable about him all who approached him be his religious deity could speak of love and fair dealing from his heart bishop paulinos never imposed a clear cut master plan upon his subordinates He rather encouraged the initiatives of his subordinates. He always achieved the planning that evolves from grassroots level. Once I approached him with a small project to get recommended by him, his first question towards me was, "Are you sure that you will implement this project?" On those days, my transfer was on discussion. I told Bishop, "If not, I." the successor who comes to my place will do it his answer was let the successor come and he will forward the project as he saw
there's thunder in every tasil frequent itinerant contact with the people as a missionary mission strategy monsignor paulinos decided to have a mission center in every tasil from where one could reach to the interior places his methodology for developing mission was frequent itinerant contact with the people several locations he said mission is meant to make strangers our friends and tell them about jesus and make them feel the love of jesus in order to reach the unreachable or to make the strangers our familiar people bishop paulinos opted for the major tagasils to start with with every with the very minimum resources but with regular village visits missionaries aimed at the by familiarizing and interacting with the people of each area within short span of time almost within 5 years the missionaries could cover major places like jagdalpur bijapur konda narayanpur kangar keskal idam and kondagaon etc the mission centers of these places could become active in each region contacts and programs were extended to many villages surrounding all those centers the primary concern concentration was on the basic needs of the people of the area like primary education facilities for both rich and the poor such as english medium school boarding facilities for poor and unreachable students to study stay and study in reputed hindi medium schools adult education centers for elders who are never enrolled in schools in the health sector they initiated dispensaries mobile health programs and mother and child health program mch program in the agricultural and livelihood sector under large food costs green bonds for seed supply land level bonds and bonds preparation for irrigation and drinking water first were commons model farming supplying bullocks sheep establishing self help groups ssg such economic well being programs were initiated for the better transportation and communication with the help of poor works program to roads to the fields and the villages were prepared reaching to the remote villages the memorable event of episcopal ordination of bishop paulinos may 11 1977 has added a new momentum to the mission in jagdalpur after the episcopal ordination the evangelization process of the diocese moved to the interior villages to the unreached people of bastar division it was an attempt to penetrate into the heartland of the tribal belt with the beloved pastor in front missionaries went ahead slowly but steadily with an untiring spirit some of the interior localities like jangalur kadidgaon Hirega, Patega, Kupaguda, Patanar, and Dugoli have become centers of multi-developmental programs. The method of frequent itinerant contacts with the common people was found to be very successful, making challenges opportunities. In the initial stage, when missionaries started activities in different tagasils, negative news was spread all over Madhya Pradesh and the neighboring states. through the newspapers bishop paulinos took this challenging and the threatening rumors as a blessing in disguise eventually rumors have spread out that a new band of missionaries have come to convert the poor tribals by distributing wheat and used the crops bishop paulinos himself commented it was a blessing in disguise that our presence here may be widely known all over central india at the request of the people from chevurgaon and its surrounding villages our present uh, the emeritus bishop simon stock vidaji and ms samai sisters initiated a developmental activities with the boarding house and the hindi medium school in chevurgaon in 1978 in 1986 with the indirect support of some officers some associates Uh, and the social elements demolished the entire school building boarding house presbytery and convent of the sisters about the challenging and painful event of the churga demolition bishop paulinos wrote in his pastoral letter regarding our diocese 1987 will be counted a very special year 
the diocese has completed 15 years 15 is a critical age boys and girls of that age experience a kind of disorientation in their life they are no more children they neither have they grown mature so they are at loss to relate them to the world around during these 15 years of our diocese was slowly taking root in bastar it has not grown big nor has it grown very strong the hostility this small church has experienced is a proof that we have grown enough to be taken not out we are sure that god has been lovingly fostering the growth of his church here the present trial which he mercifully permitted is a sign that he considered his church here strong enough to face the test thus he reiterated the motto written on his coat of arms strongly without fear nirvigada se samarthya se he asked the whole christian community to be firm in our in our dedication in and through our humble service to the poor collaboration and teamwork our beloved professor dr john brito chitimatam reflected over the life of bishop paulinos that he lived a life supporting everyone and appreciating each one's work without counting personal cost he was not a shepherd who used to guide his sheep through tail control he used to visit frequent frequently every mission station and watched and guided and directed its progress Reverend Father Alexander Maram at Timri Falls he used to visit each mission station at least 3 times a year especially in the winter the summer and in the rainy season so that he could experience for himself the hardships faced by the missionaries as well as by the people of the locality as an honest and upright man who stood for the great values of truth sincerity unbounded love and the authenticity people held him in deep respect and pro- profound admiration he was a shepherd who sought after his sheep who shared in their joys and sorrows he was one to whom they could talk as it was to a friend and a guide no wonder that it was it made headlines when he told missio aachen germany mission is to make strangers our friends similarly our Vicar General Dr. Josi Damarashevi, former provincial, and uh, uh, recollects the golden days of the team, team spirit and the collaboration of all, all of us, all of us missionaries. Monsignor Paulinos developed a strategy of collaborative mission where he tried to think along with all collaborators. He had their ideas patiently and accepted them. The priest meetings, and the missionary get together were regular features in Jakarta which provided the priests and religious sisters the chances to express their views and uh, opinions really to create an at- atmosphere of family spirit and oneness among the members many cherish even today the nostalgic experience of past days the compassionate shepherd bishop odinos as a compassionate shepherd bishop odinos used to remind Hello missionaries look how simple and happy our people are often after the tiresome work of the day they come home jubilant with smiling faces holding on each other's shoulders singing and dancing yes, this is our people simple sincere straight forward and innocent are they not challenging us out of this his compassion towards the people of bastar he facilitated Dean Bandhu Samaj to get formed in the soil of Bastar. By founding the religious congregation DBS, Bishop commented, Bastar is the place of poor people, a backward area with a weak section of mankind. Hence, if we are not their friends, we have no friends. His advice for the members of the congregation was to close, closely follow Jesus, the embodiment of God's merciful love, and be a living example of God's selfless love. Bishop Paulinos recommended fellow missionaries to make strangers their friends and tell them about Jesus, make them experience the love of Jesus. 
This was very core of his attitude. As a seminarian aspirant, when we reached the capital poor in 1976, Bishop Paulino advised us seminarians go to school and mingle with the friends, invite your friends at times to visit our place. At our wonder, when our classmates visited us, there were occasions Bishop too joined us for a cup of tea and a friendly chat, at least by asking their name and whereabouts. Bishop Paulino visualized a local church in Jagdalpur Mission based on the life, culture and the mentality of the tribal people. Though he is not physically present with us today, his fatherly love and the care is continuously being experienced by missionaries very often in many situations. May his divine assistance help us to grow ahead in fulfilling the mission entrusted to all of us by the risen Lord. I am glad to say that the dreams and vision of Bishop Paulinos is getting realized slowly but steadily. The young and spirit-filled priests, religious, lay missionaries, catechists, pastors and leaders and other collaborators of goodwill are making our mission so vibrant and growing. There are more than 5,000 Zero Malabar Catholics and nearly 7,000 Latin origin Catholics being cared by pastoral ministry in the Telpur mission. The flourishing young Catholic communities are the blessings of our mission in Jagdalpur. These young communities growing steadily in Catholic faith are results of commitment and total dedication of pioneer missionaries for the cause of giving gospel at any cost in the tribal land of Bastak. These are facilitated because the pioneer members gave a strong foundation for Catholic presence in the Diocese of Jagdalpur. I bow my heart before the saintly life of Bishop Paulinos and the first missionaries as well as all who toiled day and night allowing oneself to fall down and die in this land as the grain of wheat which bore much fruit. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you Lawrence, uh, good evening and to everybody. Briefly, I will be explaining the events and factors that is leading to the genesis of Jagadalpur Diocese and second part, the establishment development of Jagadalpur Diocese. Now, you are welcome to the video presentation. Welcome. All of you to the chronological development of Jagadalpur mission. Chhattisgarh, home of different tribes with more than 90 dialects, a forest mineral rich region, is enriched with beautiful mountain ranges, plateau, and plain land areas. Chhattisgarh was bifurcated from Madhya Pradesh in November 2000 and is situated in the central part of India, surrounded by Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh in the west, Uttar Pradesh in the north, Odisha and Jharkhand in the east, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana in the south. Jagadalpur, the headquarter of Bastar Division, which is bigger than Belgium and state of Kerala, is in the southern west region of Chhattisgarh, with people of rich cultural heritage. Now, some of the most vulnerable population groups in India live in Bastar. Chhattisgarh Raigur, Raigur Ambigapur Mission was the first mission of CMI congregation outside the copper territory of Zero Malabar, which led both CMIs and Zero Malabar Church to the erection of Chanta Diocese of Magarar Rashtra and later many other dioceses in North Indian uncommitted areas of Latin Church. Two major events to cause the initiation of these missions are worth mentioning here. Submission of the Memorandum of Reverend Father Placid Podipara to Eugene Cardinal Dissident and meeting of Bishop Oscar Severin in Raigad, Angriyapur with Prior General Dipat of Bunds devouring zero Malabar missionaries. Jagadalpur area existed under the vicariates of Mailapur, Madras, 1806-1845, Vishagapatnam, 1845-1966, and Raipur Prefecture Apostolic, 1966-1972. 
Catholic community with the establishment and development of various public private service sectors was flourishing in bus third division and especially with the arrival of faithful service providers towards the end of 1950s. Among the faithful, Mr. Carlos Minch, a staff of survey department hailing from Jaspur, who was in Bijapur, found no priest, no church, no spiritual activities, along with few other believers, contacted Bishop Stenslav, speaker of Raygada Bijapur Diocese, for the spiritual services in 1965. Bishop Tika directed them to contact Bishop Joseph Bound of Vishakapandam Diocese because the area falls under Vishakapandam. The correspondence with Bishop Joseph Bound of Vishakapandam, first in Hindi, then on request of Bishop Dayton in English, motivated the bishop to contact Monsignor John Widener. Prefect Apostolic of Raipur and thus handed over the Bastar region for better pastoral activities in 1966. Thus, with the initiatives of Monsignor Widener, the Pillar Fathers were sent to Bastar for pastoral ministry in 1966 and they started four centers such as Jagdalpur, Kirantul, Bijapur, and Gita. It was during those days, impressed by the effective pastoral service and care of CMI missionaries, Archbishop Eugene de Souza of Popal, Archdiocese, planned to entrust the CMI, some other area in promised land of Chhattisgarh region of MP. Monsignor Widener and his advisory committee too were very happy to entrust CMIs both Bilaspur and Bastar region together. But, Archbishop planned to offer Vilaspur to some small congregations with less personnel. Though cautioned by Reverend Father Liguri Semai, the principal of Holy Cross School by Rambrajar Raipur, to rethink taking up Bastar Mission alone, the burning missionary spirit of St. Joseph Province Gautam was ready to take up the Bastar Mission alone. Thus, Bastar, the exarchate of Jagadalpur, separated from Raipur and entrusted to the CMI congregation by Papal Bull Indorum Jandas in March 1972. Nirbhigdasi Samarthi without fear and with all strength, was the wonder working motto of Monsignor Paulinos Chiragat in establishing and developing the Diocese of Jagadalpur. His vision in establishing new diocese was very closely associated with the life and culture of tribal people of the area. The concept of missionary work for him was making stranger our friend. In 1972 itself, Kangar and Dugoli in 1973, Karidugav Gidam Bacheli in 1974, Kondagav Narayanpur Konda and in 1976, Paligav Potanar Kheskal Sunday started. Also in 1976, the Nbindu Samaj DBS congregation was founded by Monsignor Paulinos at Konda. 1st May 1977, the circuit was declared a parque and Monsignor Paulinos became the first bishop of Jagadalpur Diocese. In 1977, Gangalurs, 1978, Adaval, Chivrugav, Chintagat, Kodagav, and 1982, Sukma, 1983, Bhanpuri. 1985 Devada, Bhanu Pratapur, 1986 Bhante Bhiragav, Dharampura Center started. After the demise of Bishop Paulinus, on 17th August 1992, 28 January 1993, Kurian Pacheri became the administrator of the diocese. In 1991, Nalasnar and 1993, Madam Center began. On 28 January 1993, Father Simon Stroke became the second Bishop of Jagadalpur Diocese. Significant growth and development of the diocese vigorously continued during time of Bishop Simon Stroke. He was a pioneer missionary of the diocese. It is he who encouraged his co-workers to initiate and promote new and promising tasks and endeavors. As an empowering administrator, he divided the structure of the diocese into three deaneries, north, south and central. 
As an excellent format, he established first decision seminary Viani Bhavan at Parpa and followed by Gurugul at Kondagao. Since there was no efficient medical facilities in the region, he struggled to establish the MPM hospital at Jagadalpur for the conscientization of priests, religious and lay persons. He dared to begin the Good Shepherd Pastoral Center in Jagadalpur. For the improvement in quality education, he granted permission to open schools both for diocesan centers and congregations. His attempt to open a private university, Dharma Dipti, was later withdrawn due to several reasons. His open door policy attracted many congregations and societies to the diocese to be involved in the mission activities of the diocese and thus the expansion of mission into interior villages were very successful. And later Bishop Joseph Columbarambul became the third bishop of diocese on 16th July 2013. Bishop is well known for his humility leadership abilities and scholarly approach. His strong association in the mission and excellent rapport with all in Jagadalpur mission will stand in good stead. His way of approach in formation and ongoing formation of peace and religious is highlighted everywhere in the diocese and also all of the formation centers in India. His Excellency's commitment for the quality education for common people of the area is indisputable and many schools are opened in the diocese also by the different congregations. Approach in evangelization and ecumenism also with interreligious dialogue is also praiseworthy and the result of his efforts are visible clearly in the diocese. With his humility, leadership ability and scholarly approach, the diocese is growing gradually to the heights. My presentation is on Jagadalpur Mission, Pioneers and their, their contributions. Jagadalpur was literally an unknown and very strange place for the CMIs since the best prepared presentation was already given by Reverend Father Abraham Butchwarek I am not going to say anything about the historical development. The area was interested to us, the Mice of Kottayam province was best there. A single but vast district which was bigger than the state of Kerala. Christianity was not new here in Bester. It was alive here in Bester, Bester years before the Catholic missionaries reached here, pastoral care of the Catholic community in Western and mission work in this area of MB was entrusted to the Pillar Fathers from Goa in 1966. They had started just two centers in Western district, one in Gerento and the other was in Jagadalpur itself. And we received the mission from Pillar Fathers. Taking up the mission of Jagadalpur in the district of Bastar of Madhya Pradesh, one of the highly tribal area was a challenge to the CMIs. But the missionary zeal of the pioneers of made all impossibilities into I am possible. Following the model of Isaiah, who answering the question of Yahweh, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Said, Here I am, sent me. Our pioneers also said, Here we are, send us. They did not have any worries about the tribal area, their languages, climate, life conveniences or lack of good life facilities. They were filled with mission zeal in their heart. Leaving the historical fact is, I want to bring to your attention that the mission was promulgated and entrusted to the CMIs by Pope Paul VI in 1972 to the papal bull in Dorum Gentis and Reverend for Paulinus Jiragat, CMI was appointed as the first exarch of the new mission. The then CMI prayer journal with Reverend Father Canisius CMI 
consulting with the general counselors, informed the provincial of St. Joseph Province, Kottayam, that the mission in Bestar is entrusted to St. Joseph Province, Kottayam. The first batch of CMI missionaries reached Bestar on 26th June 1972. On 23rd, 1972, four CMI fathers, Reverend Father Simon Stoke Palatra, Edmund Puri and my children, Joseph Orki Pukan Barengel, Abraham Dirithumali and six CMC sisters under the leadership of Mothers of Paul Edith Chirigats, CMI started their journey to Jagalpur in two different batches. The first batch reached in Jagalpur on 26th June 1972. Reverend Father Sebastian Gandhati, Reverend Father Thomas Vada Parambil and Mike Michael Munda Tharat, Emilian Vettles, Ernest Palathra, Louis Matthew, J.C.S. Prasad, Pudu Kulangara, Jos Palathra, Thomas Iripodikil and Brother Joseph Vadake Kananjara also joined the mission later. From the very beginning, itself religious states also joined CMI Fathers to work in the field of yoga formation. Six CMC sisters accompanied the fathers in the first batch of missionaries to reach the newly elected General Exarchate in 1972. In 1972 itself, after a few months, SABS sisters joined our mission to take up, the, take up certain ministries in different mission stations on those days. In 1974, sisters of such congregation reached Jagdalpur and joined the mission station at Bijapur. MSMI sisters came to the mission in 1976 and started to assist the ministries in the mission stations of Peridigav and Gidam. ASMI sisters came over to Jagadapur to serve the mission in the same year, 1976, they started their service at Narayanpur. In 1976, Monsignor Paulina started a new diocesan religious congregation for women. DBS. SMS from SMS states from Pala, Diocese joined Jagadapur mission in 1978. They were zero in the sense that no land, no house to stay, no electricity, no drinking water, no conveyance, no basic securities of life. They walked and traveled through the ways no one has walked so far. Few had cycles and others either walk or travel by bullock carts. The home it is with the great burning spirit of the word of God to reach the unreached. They believed and kept meditating on Jesus' words. Take nothing for the journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. They followed Jesus' command, eat and drink whatever they provide you, and if an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you are, you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. So the pioneers with no worries penetrated into the villages and felt very much at home with the tribals they lived with. Yes, that was a lifestyle of our pioneer missionaries who toiled for the development of Western mission into the diocese of Jagadapur. Major parts of what we see today, both the institutions and the faithful, are the results of their hard work and selfless toil. Our pioneers were just like Prophet Elijah, being very zealous for the Lord Mighty, or Mighty, they traveled looking for the people. They had no question of distance in their mind nor any demands of life facilities. Their heart was their heart, heart was burning with the zeal of for the Lord. Like our found, founder Saint Chavara, love for the Lord and for the people was their so-called food and drink. They forgot their own food, drink and the facilities of life. Yet they were not tired. Our pioneers reached out to the people staying far in the interior villages of Bessa. The distance was not a question of far, rather they wanted to make the people of such distances close to their heart and to close to the place of their living. So they themselves walked to their interior villages to stay with them. 
our pioneers, first mission stations, and their contributions. Our pioneers, we may usually refer to the people who toiled and gone, but here I refer not only to those who toiled and gone, rather also to people and fathers who toiled hard, shedding their sweat, contributed tremendously to make the diocese what it is today. So I have taken 30 years from the beginning looking for the concrete contributions of the mission missionaries. It is praiseworthy to note that pioneers started mission stations in various interior villages with much people-oriented programs like hostels and schools for the tribal children and social integral development activities. Many places people had taken the initiative to get us in their villages to begin various programs. However, it was not very easy to reach out to the Indian villages since there were no means of conveyance or travel. The first batch of missionaries, Monsignor Paulinus, Gilles CMI. Grandfather Simon Stuck, Mahalakara, CMI. Run for Korean Machel CMI. Run for Joseph Putamarikel CMI. Run for Abraham Dutumani CMI. The inauguration of Jagadapur Exarchate on July 23rd, 1972. Bishop Ma Paulinus Jirat CMI In 1977, the Holy See had elevated the Exarchate into the status of diocese through the papal bull Nobis Met Ipsis by Pope Paul VI. Monsignor Paulinus Jirat was made the first bishop of the diocese of Jagdapur. He was consecrated as bishop on May 11, 1977 at Mamana, the mother house of the CMI congregation by Cardinal Joseph Paraikatil. He was ordained priest on 18 February 1946. He was Elected Provincial of St. Joseph Province Court in 1972 and as the first SR gate of the other in 1972 itself. He was also the mission superior of CMI in Jagadalpur till 1976 at the request of Run for the Provincial of St. Joseph Province Court M. Monsignor Paulinus Jiras was ordained as the bishop in 1977. But Paulin is a missionary and a visionary of with the motto with courage and without fear. Nirthikita se or Samarthi se. He was a shepherd with the, with the smell of the sheep. With courage and without fear, he encountered all the challenges that came across the mission of proclaim, proclaiming the good news. He used to inspire the missionaries to be a symbol equal to zero, telling, strive to imbibe the spirit of Bastar and her people. Look at the people, they come back home after the tiresome work of the day, smiling, singing and dancing. Yes, that is our people, simple, sincere, straightforward and innocent. They are not, are they not challenging us? Yes, that very question here we used to raise to the missionaries was a challenge for the mid pioneers to be happy and satisfied with what they have. These are all some shots of his visit to the villages 
that he used to make at least thrice in a year. Bishop Aurelius Jesus was a man of principles and a man of prayer, not, not in mere words but in life. He embodied the same mechanism of contemplative active life. He was convinced of the fact that prayer life and apostolic life cannot be separated. They are intimately and inseparably knit together. Kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament for long hours was a part of his life. And there he received the solutions for many of the challenges he encountered in his mission. His regenerating memory will remain with us forever. Bishop House Lalbai. This is the first, one of the first mission stations or the house that was entrusted. It was started in 1967 by Pilar Fathers and it was handed over to us in 1972. And for Simon Stokala, Palatra had, be, had been appointed as a superior of the mission station. The Kirandu mission station was started in 68 by Filar Fathers and it was entrusted to us in 1972. The Kirandu mission station was taken over by Grandfather Purian Machedi and a group of sisters, same six sisters, in 1972 itself. At that time, it was a very small school of primary in a rented house. The Bijapur Mission. What we see on the screen is the first mission house in Bijapur built by Ranfar Abraham Virtumalil for his stay. Hangar Mission Station was in started by Joe Thomas Waterparam in 1972. It is 180 kilometers from the center of Po. There was no roads reached there, but with, with great difficulties, our fathers reached those places. Gidham mission was started by Joseph Putten CMI in 1973, which was also the first provincial house, the vice provincial house when we inaugurated our base province in 1978. The Quantum Mission Station. It was started by Thomas Puth, the police CMI in 1974. But the Thaw Mission Station was started by on Kondagao mission station was started by Crown Father Mary's CMI in 1974. Castle mission station was also started by Father Anthony Mary's in 1974. Portal mission station was started by J. Swami Puri KCMI in 1976 after his return from America for uh, his higher studies. Grandfather Grandfather Joseph Adagir Kannanjara started the Chindagar Mission Station in 1976. Kedidwa Mission Station was started by Grandfather Simon Stoke Palatra in 1976. Yangmaru Mission Station is one of the first stations to the south. It was started by Abraham Dutumalil, CMI 1977. And later, our father Sebastian Kandadil has taken up the mission and he, was, he stayed there for 
15 years of his missionary life. It was very difficult to reach the place. There were three rivers in between, but he traveled through that way, which no one dared to travel even today. Kodagawa Mission Station was started by Thomas Tarapel in 1978. And he started this mission station walking from the Kankan Mission Station almost 17 kilometers. Later, he got a, he got a cycle to travel to that place. Chiyoga Mission Station just encountered very critical situations in the past mission life was started for famous Sir Baladra in 1980. The Goli Mission Station was started by Anfa Thomas Medical in 1981. It was a substation sub belonging to the major station of Bijapur. Sukma Mission Station was started by Anfa John Arikatara in 1982. So Narpa Mission Station was started by Jos Palatra in 1985. Bandhi Mission Station, that's another end of the mission towards the north, was started by Ranfa Peter Kopel in 1986. That is around 320 kilometers from the center, the other center. Adabal Mission Station was started by Jos Balatra CMI in 1986. He is also the engineer of the many of the first mission, sta uh, mission stations and institutions of the other four dioceses. Mirangawa Mission Station was started by, so by Joseph Pawalam CMI in 1986. Pakanchu is a very far, far station from here was started by John Adekia John in 1990. Putni Mission Station was started by Aranfa Jus from the CMI in 1997 when he was the session in charge of Bande. Chote Betia is another mission station started by Aranfa Jus from the in 2000 and three. Nirmal Vidyala started in 1973 by Vaikal Mantathana. Semai was the co-founder principal, that was the founder principal. St. Michael's School Tiger was started by Thomas Vadaparam with Semai in 1974. The, the St. Joseph Cathedral, which was a dream of Bishop Paul in was uh, consecrated in 1991. Yes, no doubt that we were work, we are working on the foundation. Our pioneers are laid and established in the more strongly. The pioneers built from the ashes, and we need to be thankful to them for taking such daring steps to go to the so remote and so idiot places walking long distances. Let it remain an inspiration for all of us to continue the spirit of entering into the barren and isolated far places, imbibing the zeal for the Lord and for the gospel. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Now over to success stories of 50 years in the field of formation, social apostolate and education. The success stories behind the growth of educational institutions in Basta, starting from its very inception and the consequent and tremendous developmental changes it brought about in the lives of the people of Basta, draw its inspiration from St. Kuriakos Elias Chavra's vision of education. The legacy of St. Chavra in the area of education is kept alive by the ardent missionaries today. Given the varied culture, language and dialects, political situations, the seal of the missionaries to toil day and night has found its result in shaping institutions which are sought after and individuals 
as IAS officers, judges, district collectors, magistrates, lawyers, police officers, many public officials, successful IT and business people. Students who have come out of Christ College Chakdalpur are employed in big companies doing research or employed abroad. Education around 1970s in Nasta. In many aspects, the region stood very, very low. The main reason being education. Literacy rate was well below 10%, maybe little higher in cities, but 8, 6, 2% in villages. There were only very, very few schools. Existing schools were superfluous, many dropouts, low awareness regarding education, scarcity of fund for education, need of creating demand and interest among students for education. In whole Basta division, now it is consisting of seven districts, there were only two boys high school and two girls high school. And hence it has been our attempt to establish educational institutions way into the remote villages and other places to educate the children of the land, enable them to support themselves and their families. Education has been in the limelight always from the very beginning, coupled with social developmental projects for the villages and the attempts have been fruitful yielding institutional and individual successes. The missionaries worked and the results were very encouraging, enriching and promising. Now we have institu institutions, our own Catholic institutions, schools and colleges together we have more than 41. Students studying in those institutions are more than 37,000 and 1300 staff are working there. And we have so many government institutions which could we could be proud of. And there are so many examples where we could see the success. And one such success story of an institution is at Chiyuga Mariguda. School at Chiyuga Mariguda, one of the pioneering schools, had a very humble beginning but fast growth. Meanwhile, some antisocial elements demolished the school, but the pioneers stood firm and rebuilt the school regardless of the difficulties. Now it is one of the most sought after Hindi medium schools in Chhattisgarh. The school is shown here. And, and we have uh, so many examples of individual success and a few I am citing here. One is Revati Mohanty. She is inspired award winner, junior scientist, national level, ranked the second among Indian B schools in India by FT ranking 2021. We have Aslesha Sharma, studied mechanical engineering at Manav Fresno International University, Faridabad, now pursuing her studies in Germany. Another, another Namrata Jain IAS, she is uh, at present SDM at Sarayapalli Mahasamu district. And Shivendra Tekam is a civil judge at Dandavada at present. Ayushi Divedi, a senior legal manager, ICICI Bank, BKC Mumbai. And Captain Samrat Sharma, serving India in Kashmir over to now formation. The CMI presence in the land of Buster has made drastic and revolutionary changes in the field of missionary formation. The first batch of missionaries, when they started the work in the land of Buster, really felt the inadequacy of the traditional formation they have received in Kerala to meet the challenging needs of the mission land. So they urged the authorities to start a formation house in the mission itself, which would take into consideration the diversities in the language, culture and religious practices in the life of the people in Basta. Consequently, Sumanashram Paliga was established as the first formation house in the area of Basta. 
so many batches of students have been getting religious and missionary formation in this spirit's house prime importance was given to the formation the evidence is that first house itself of the province was formation house at paligaf and quality personnel were involved in the formation our bishops father alexander maramitam thomas vadakungara father thomas manikam father jossi tamarasheri for sabas near capelli thomas mpadanjura and so on so forth in the early 90s when father kurin macheri as the administrator of the diocese of jagdalpur the diocesan council made a decision to invite many sister congregations to start their formation houses in the diocese of jagdalpur understanding the formation friendly atmosphere of the diocese of jagdalpur many religious congregations of sisters accepted this invitation and made their formation houses here thus land of jagdalpur has become a formation friendly a model a brand chain for formation and a formation hub many congregations started their formation houses all the stakeholders love the land of formation bastar for formation the following data would speak of the success of the formation in bastar we have now 10 aspirants houses six novitiates five postulate houses four minor seminaries and one quasi major seminary all these institutions have drastically changed the face of the missionary formation both qualitatively and quantitatively as we know for the topo the first north indian priest for the congregation from jagdalpur a program called classes annual get together for all the formies in bastar is an enriching and learning experience for all the formies cri jagdalpur unit conducts programs for juniors regularly now stop social apostolate social environment around 1970 It was a fertile land, the soil for social work. Reason being, very backward region, it's a tribal belt, a district bigger than the size of Kerala, least accessible, industrially underdeveloped, dense and diverse forests, and so many dialects. People were anemic, untidy, unhealthy, medically illiterate. Less medical facilities; they were prone to malaria, jaundice, TB, HIV, etc. the major activities that we have done over the years include balawadis and this has benefited so many thousands students we have tribal hostels where we have students who are going to the school nearby schools and also program like vocational training the host hostel itself we have a community health programs dispensaries mobile health clinics training programs awareness skill development occasional low cost homes we have made many hundreds houses and so many benefit out of this water harvesting pond making well making watershed programs road making since it was very very needed at that time and there are so many trees were planted during these years literacy programs like street plays quality education for all village library animation saving schemes and crs mcs sf os ocf smcs crs hds programs were running in the health care sector mbm hospital is the best private hospital in the jagdalpur city and we have a jeevan jodi netralaya run by the province 
and many hospitals and dispensaries different parts of the bastar now frontier ministries we have a number of such ministries in the land of bastar one is asha ashram kaligav run by cmis hostel for the differently abled manovikas at dharampura run by sbs sisters it's a school home hostel for girls for the differently abled asha bhavan nakti shemra run by sms sisters it's a home for the aged and asha nivas adavan run by dices it's also home for the aged ashirwad mentor rehabilitation center kolchu run by sms sisters and we have also ashram run by missionaries of charity brothers Bastar is one of the fast developing cities of India and so and if so a substantial portion of its credit would go to the missionaries this is success of our life and activities we can be proud of the qualitative and quantitative changes of the face of Bastar and can keep contributing thank you Religious sisters, as associate missionaries, could do their part in reaching the world and reaching out to the people of the land of Bastar in the diocese of Jatam. They accompanied the priest in prayer as soon as. took tourism mystery journeys in the few of them share their first hand experience here our superiors from pale uh, sent four sisters in the year 1974 uh, for mission work they came to bijampur and they learned a little bit in hindi and they started going to the villages so they started at bijapur and they were going to the villages visiting the houses and they got so many bad experiences because these people of the area they did not know about the sisters or any dress after few years uh, they became friendly uh, these sisters used to go to gangalur uh, one near station uh, started after bijapur uh, by walking sometimes by cycling and uh, sometimes by bullock cart our pioneers were in search of a suitable place to work for god's kingdom among the poor people they were given the newly started mission station konta as their working field the sisters reached there on 3 june 1975 they concentrated their work in the surrounding villages of the mission stations they went for village visiting and they found that education and health care were the immediate need of the people to um, improve their agriculture ponds were dug drinking water was made available and uh, uh, their agriculture land was leveled then uh, new methods of agriculture were taught to them uh, we used to go for village visiting to supervise the classes at night and stayed there overnight we taught them in 1972 october 4th i reached here with our provincials and with our fathers we reached here and saw the bishop's house we started there with much unity and with much sharing 
all the fathers especially our bishop he was they were so particular to us in order to go to the villages and also what to do how to do and with the fear only i reached here but fear means about the bust i heard so many stories these people will not accept the strangers if they see us they will kill that was the message i got from my readings and from my brothers instruction center with that fear i entered here we could work very happily and with much joy and enthusiasm we could work with them and also here we came here to spread the real love of the eucharistic lord to each and everyone from the beginning we had lot of hardships we didn't have houses even to live but we lived happily and our beloved bishops all of them late paulinos jiragathil mar simon stock and the present bishop of jagdalpur joseph kollamarambil all of them take interest they had equal interest in the spiritual matters and also they have given interest to the upliftment of the society and we are progressing day by day now what is bastar that is the earned effort of our pioneer members and fathers and sisters along with our people those who worked with us msm sisters reached in this mission in 1976 the first bishop of jagdalpur lech mar polinas jeragat invited us in this mission we were living in small huts this house was made, house were made with mud and no facilities at all we could live very difficult with very difficulty because wherever we have to go there was no convenience at all no bus no car nothing only the vehicle was only bullock cart or by walk as we were working with the emeritus bishop simon stock he was the in charge of the stations and whenever we go to the village there was no proper way no road nothing in the jeep he was always keeping some instruments to make the way and we have to go because we were going through the jungle every way every day the meeting of the people and conducting with them we could learn the local language their local language through that language only we could do a lot of work on 23 June 1972 the first batch of CMC sisters from Pala province along with the CMI fathers came to reach at Jagdalpur when we reached there at Kirandul Bayadila the forest was more forest was there and the pillar fathers were running Uh, primary school english medium prakash vidyalaya and when re- we reached there they handed handed over the school to us the cmc sisters from kirandul we extended our mission work at kangar and mainly the work the village work we wish to have and we were walking a long distance by walk every day for visiting the houses of villages and they were very happy to welcome us to this jagadalpur mission along with our sumai fathers in the beginning of this mission itself when i look back 
marvel to see that the grateful things God has done through us in this mission. By the grace of God, we could play an important role in the bringing up of these villages, especially the poor people, spiritually, physically, morally, and we could touch and develop all the realms of their life. As a whole, when I look, nothing else I can say, only gratitude and thanks to God. People were very poor and afflicted, anemia, malaria, cholera, etc. And I saw these people I felt very sad and I, I wanted to do something for these people and I came back to our station. We ASMI sisters came to Naranpur in 1974. According to our charism, looking after leprosy patients and needy, sick, Brethren, sisters had opted for a leprosy work, especially in Ambuchimat, Orcha area, since there were no doctors or no staff, government people were taking care of the leprosy patients. Uh, sisters, along with the fathers, initially with the CMI fathers, were going to the villages and for even for a week staying in the village and giving them medicines, doing the surveys and we are coming back in the evening or in the weekend to Naranpur and even to the villages, going to the villages there were no doctors in the in Naranpur district that time only a PHC was there and uh, we sisters almost always there was a sister doctor and the nurses giving care to the patients so the patients were being brought to the hospital from the villages, even carrying them in the baskets in the early stages. The doctors were not staying in Naranpur and the doctors were reluctant to come to Naranpur and stay there because of the transport facilities, uh, the phone, there were no, there was no phone facilities that time. And patient, patients were also finding easy with sisters, their approach and they were friendly, sisters were friendly with patients so they were coming from the villages uh, to the hospital and they were ready to stay here. Well, in the initially many of them were taking treatment according to their uh, local customs since the transport facilities were uh, not there that time. As we reached here in Jagadalpur diocese, we got a warm welcome from Bishop Mar Paulinus Jirakatil. We came here with a great missionary spirit. We saw the pathetic situation of the people in Bastar land. We got more enthusiasm to do something for them. The land of Bastar lacked with good and efficient doctors and medical facilities. When we reached in village, the village people, they were not ready to come outside. They were sitting inside of the home. As uh, like uh, wearing this habit and everything. Because of that, uh, they were not ready to approach with us. We adjusted with that uh, people and uh, we became so friendship with them. And uh, people also uh, participating with us, uh, singing, dancing. It was so beautiful and uh, memorable days for us. Our pioneers were pained by seeing the number of people in need of medicine and health care. But we could not afford them all. inspired us to start to open a home for aged. So we started a house in Adavel with a specific charism of witnessing the compassionate love of Jesus 
among the poor and destitute. As the Missio Dei progressed, few other congregations too accompanied the mission. They are Martha's congregation, Sisters of the Don Bosco, Franciscan Clarist congregation, Sisters of St. John the Baptist, Daughters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Fervent Daughters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Missionaries of Sacred Heart of Jesus, and Prashidharam Sisters. How the life was in a very difficult situation, but we were very happy. That was a video presentation on the memories of Jagdalpur mission from other missionaries. We followed our hands with great admir admiration because we were really taken up by their sharing. And may I appreciate and thank Father Prince Anani who worked behind this uh, video presentation, a young and vibrant missionary from Jagdalpur Diocese. Thank you, Father Prince. Dear participants, we are coming towards the end of the today's uh, webinar. May I invite Reverend Father Thomas Vallavananikil to propose the word of thanks. Good evening one and all. Usually at any public program, when the word of thanks is announced, the audience begins to leave. You are free to do so, but I request all of you to stay a few more minutes to thank each other for this great coming together. Today is a celebration of God's providential care and an expression of deep gratitude. It's a, sort, it's a story richly textured with daring faith, generous love, and unbounded hope. Let us thank God Almighty for the great gift of the mission of Jagdalpur, which has been blessed with missionaries filled with the spirit of Saint Chawra, our founder, to serve God and his people in this remotest area of our country. We thank the whole congregation of the Carmelites of Mary Immaculate, with its very Reverend Prior General at the head, and all the General Counselor Fathers, who were an inspiration behind the beginning of the celebration of 50 years of CMI presence in the mission of Jagdalpur. I take this opportunity to thank and congratulate Reverend Father Varelan, Director of Samanaya Theologate, Bhopal, and Reverend Father Lawrence, both coordinators of the Jubilee celebration, for their wonderful and creative leadership in organizing this webinar. Our heartiest thanks goes to His Excellency Dr. Joseph Kalaparambil, CMI, for heading the mission of Yagdalpur at this time and for his inspirational talk on the vision of Mark Paulinus Diragat. Much of his presentation was from his personal experience with Bishop Paulinus. We pay tributary thanks to Bishop Emeritus, Mara Simon Stock Paratra, CMI, and late Bishop Paulinus Diragat, CMI, and all the pioneer missionaries who have gone to their heavenly abode. I also avail this opportunity to thank sincerely Reverend Father Josie Thamaraseri Vikar General for his touching words of blessings as he knows the mission very close, being the member of the Nirmal province, Jagdalpur. He took us back to the times of Bishop Paulinus' dictum, Nirbhiktase Samarthyase, which means without fear, with dedication. I thank Reverend Father Abraham Kochigarikil for the wonderful presentation of the historical, chronological development of Jagdalpur mission. 
He is the man, together with Father Babu Manadu Panguri, who have to be applauded for taking so much pain in collecting the data, for bringing out on record the history of Jagdalpur mission. And I am quite sure that this mission will successfully be carried out very soon under their able leadership. I thank Reverend Father Thomas Mukundjira, CMI Vicar General, Dice of Jagdalpur, for wonderfully presenting the contributions of the pioneers of Jagdalpur mission, not missing any stone unturned. Father Santosh Kotheril, Councillor for Finance and Agriculture, and Father Prince Anthony deserve a special thanks for the painstaking effort they have made to add to the full vision of Jagdalpur mission with the success stories of 50 years and organizing the memories of Jagdalpur mission from our associate missionaries. I would like to place on record a very special thanks to Reverend Father Thomas Wadakangara, our friendship, for his leadership in planning and conducting this webinar in a systematic way, giving timely suggestions and ideas for its success. Now, you are audience both offline and online who are participants at this time from all over the world you deserve a special thanks from reverend father pronunciation and all the members of jagdalpur mission for your participation that has given us an inspiration to go forward with the mission that we are interested with i understand that you have been in different time zones to attend this webinar still you made it Congratulations and thanks. I also remember with gratitude Father Jimmy Padra Parambil, Prefect of the Provincial House, Father Babu Manodu Panguril, Secretary to Father Provincial, all the Councillor Fathers and all the inmates of Provincial House and all involved in the arrangement and technical support for this webinar. Thanking one and all and requesting your valuable support and prayers for the mission of Jagdalpur, I remain. Thank you. Bishop Ji, again, on behalf of the congregation, thanking you and all those who have contributed, Father Provincial and all others from the province. And you have participated, made use of the participation of sisters. That was uh, very encouraging, especially for me, because it was a huge learning from uh, sisters also, because they put a lot of effort from the beginning of the from 1972. So thank you all for the wonderful cooperation, huge learnings and uh, wishing you all the best. <laughs>